good morning champions and welcome back to another episode hope you're doing well going to be doing something a little different today our first land base and our first bit of bait fishing but it's not your typical kind of species for bait fishing we're going to be setting up on that ledge out there and seeing if we can pick up a few lootery let's go And here we are and this is an absolutely primo little ludric ledge all this green stuff on the ground well that's bait they're mainly herbivores the old ludric so this is a bit of sea cabbage which is my favorite bait for them and it's friggin everywhere and this is yeah an absolutely prime location for them so i've got Nice straight drop off, don't have to worry about dragging them over any rocks or anything. Goes down to about three metres, so... Look, they do come up quite shallow, but I like a bit of a drop off. Tends to be more of them around in these conditions. A little bit of wash as well. Conditions are absolutely friggin' prime. I wouldn't mind a little bit more swell, just to fire them up a bit. They get keen when there's a bit of wave action coming over at these rock ledges and, and knocking a bit of weed in for them, but we're going to do that for them. So I just gotta pick a bit up. And this is what I like to do when I first get to a spot too. Might as well start burling for them. Beautiful. Right, before I rig up, I just got a little bit of a public service announcement to anyone who might be a bit of a novice uh, rock fisherman. If you already know what's going on, feel free to skip forward to this time right here. So guys, if you're new to rock fishing but want to give it a go, bloody oath it's so fun got absolutely perfect coastline for it plenty of fish to target but rock fishing is the most dangerous sport in australia between 2004 and 2019 there are 192 deaths from rock fishing and 126 of those are in new south wales so if you can't swim don't go rock fishing if you're unfamiliar with the australian coast and what our ocean can do stick to safe ledges this is a wet ledge, waves are coming up and over the top of it, I'd stay away from them. Stick to higher ledges, calm conditions, and work your way up. Go with experienced people if you want to go test new places. When you get to a spot, watch it for a bit, see what the waves are doing, and have a plan A. So if a big wave comes, where are you going? So I've got a pretty clean escape route, I'll just be coming up to this high ground here. I'd say I'll be able to stand on that ledge for 99% of the day maybe have to back off for a couple waves. Plan B, if you go in the drink, where are you gonna go? If there's nowhere to climb back up, like you're basically done for if you're by yourself. So I've got a couple options. I'm a pretty confident swimmer, so I'd probably go around into this bay and there's some nice flat rocks to get up on over there. Right, there's also a few bits of essential kit if you wanna go rock fishing. First one is the good old phone. And that's just for checking conditions. Know what the swell's doing, what it's gonna be doing, what the wind's doing, if there's gonna be wind swell coming up. If there's a high tide coming, which I do like to fish over the high tide, then expect the waves to, to come up a little bit as well. So that's the first bit of essential kit. The next bit of essential kit is a good pair of rock fishing shoes. And by that, I mean steel studded boots. Or some of the older blokes, they still love buying sneakers or getting your old sneakers and you bolt some cleats onto them. But these things keep you safe, you're able to brace against waves, heaps of traction, keep your feet warm. Don't go without them. If you're just in sneakers, you're asking just to go ass up, even just walking along the rocks. Next, a PFD. For better or worse, a lot of councils are getting on the idea that a PFD is required for rock fishing. By all means, certain conditions, I would wear a PFD if not, if, even if I wasn't made to. But yeah, in other conditions, I would have one of these on 
even if it wasn't the law. Some more non-essential stuff, some waterproof pants. Just gonna keep your legs dry, it's a little chilly today. Same as a spray jacket. Don't wear a hoodie or anything like that or trackies because if you go in the drink, you're just gonna be basically a, a stone. For Ludric, you wanna keep them fresh until you fill them, so a catch bag's pretty essential. And all you do is chuck them in that, throw them in a, in a rock pool, make sure you tie it off or put a, like a star sinker on it, wedge it between some rocks so it's not gonna get washed in. And yeah, fill them up at the end of the day, make sure you brain spike them and then bleed them and you'll get some beautiful fillets off them. Supplies for putting on your split shot of the rig, which I'll show you in a second. If you uh, forget your pliers, you can use your teeth, but I'm sure nine out of 10 dentists would not recommend. And then some hemostats are pretty, um, pretty handy as well. Because Ludric have quite small mouths, they can be prone to swallowing the bait as well. So a little pair of hemostats just to get those hooks out. If, um, if you, it's having a hard time getting the hook out, bite it off and either let the fish go. They throw the hooks pretty easy as well as they rust out eventually. Um, if you're gonna keep him too, it's better just bite off the hook and put him in the catch bag. You don't want him dying in there and sitting there and the meat, meat spoiling a bit. All right, guys, now that's out of the road. Let's get on to what we're using today. And I've actually bought out two setups and it kind of breaks down to the new school and the old school. And this is definitely my preferred method and I'll get into why that is a little bit later. But I just thought I'd start off with the new school just because it's most likely you guys would have at least half the setup ready to go already. So what that is, I've got a little 2500 size reel and I've matched that with a 10 foot six, three to five kilo rod. And the longer rod is just gonna make it easier to bring fish over the ledge, about 20 foot, 10 foot would be about the minimum you'd want off the rocks. That one there's an 11 foot four, which is even more ideal, I reckon. And you want it to be a nice floppy rod or what they call a slow taper, which, is mean, which means the bend comes all the way down the rod nearly towards the handle. And it's just because of the way that the Ludric fight, they do a rough and tumble kind of fight and you really want to cushion their head shakes. Otherwise you'll pull the hooks on them. And I've got that spooled up with 10 pound braid and about three meters of 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now, mono or braid, look, they're both gonna do really well. But what you do wanna make sure is that your main line is gonna be heavier than the very leader of your rig. And what I'll do now is I'll get into the rig, but I'll do that from home just so I can show it off a bit better for you. All right, guys, here's your traditional Ludric rig. And I've just downsized it just to make it a bit easier to show off. But first step in rigging up will be to put on a float stopper. And here's what a pack of those look like. Pretty simple to put on. You're just gonna put your line through one of those loops, double it back on itself, and then pull the stopper onto the line. It's sometimes handy to put two on if you find that one isn't staying put where you want it. But basically you're gonna slide that up and down your line to determine where your bait's gonna be sitting in the water. And having it about a meter off the bottom is generally a pretty good place to start. Next, you'll have your float. Underneath that, a little soft bead, and that's just gonna protect the bottom eyelid of your float against the sinker. And you can use a bean or barrel or ball sinker, they're all gonna be fine. Another soft bead, just protect the knot down to a swivel, and I always go a uni knot. So once I'm at that point, I would go and throw that in the water and you're just checking to see that the sinker is the correct weight to take the float down to near neutral buoyancy. So I'd want the float to be sitting about there in the water with just that sinker attached. Next, about 80 centimetres or so of fluorocarbon leader, which I really like, Sunline FC Rock, and eight pound off the rocks is a pretty good medium. And so if you're going to use an eight pound leader, you'd want your main line or your first bit of leader if you're using braid on the spool to be at least a couple of pound heavier. And that way, if you hook the bottom, you're only going to lose the last bit of leader instead of your float and everything else. So about 80 centimetres a leader, a couple of bits of split shot. And you pick up one of these from Big W Kmart with a few different sizes in there. And a couple of bits of split shot are just going to be easy to control when casting your line, but more importantly, they're going to make it so that the float is 
basically at neutral buoyancy and the fish aren't going to feel anything when taking the bait down. So you're just going to want the very end of your float poking out or just the stem. A couple of bits of split shot and then down to a size 6 through to 10 hook and this is a Gemakatsu panfish hook especially made for Ludric. If you can't find them a little suicide hook would work fine but there's also another hook out there which I like even more than these as well which I'll show off a little bit later. But yeah that's it your basic Ludric rig. Alright we're all rigged up get our float sitting pretty nice in the water just going to chuck in a bit more burly and use the exact same stuff for bait. So when getting the bait, I just like to pick a bit and keep the root section attached to it. So where it anchors to the rocks, this bit up here, it's, it's a bit tougher than the rest of it. And I'm just going to trim that down till we have about a bait size looking bit. So we've got the root section there, which is nice and tough. And this is the way I like to put it on a hook. By far the best, I reckon. So we're just going to lay the hook next to it, have the line going up near the root section. And just going to do a couple of half hitches over that tough root. Down near the hook eye, but not over it. You don't want the half hitches on the shank of the hook. Otherwise, it's going to weaken the line. You might get busted off. A couple of half hitches. And then we're just going to thread, thread the cabbage on like a regular bit of bait. Do that a couple of times and trim it up if necessary. That, a lot of people would say that's a perfect bait right there. I reckon that's a little bit big. I like to make it so it's just one easy mouthful for them to get. So just gonna break off the end. And that right there is a primo looking bait in my eyes. Got the hook point showing a bit. All right, let's get into it. I've got the depth set to be under eight foot. Again, it's probably two, three meters here. So you just got the, the depth at eight foot. I might lower it or I might raise it. We're just gonna see how we go to begin with. So with using an egg beater, you're generally gonna to wanna to leave it in freeze pool to let the float move out with the ocean naturally. If a wave pushes it in, flick it over, control your line so you don't have too much slack between you and the float. You can generally leave it in freeze pool and that way it's gonna be a nice natural presentation going back with the surges. And we're just waiting for that float to go under. It might be very slow or it might rock it down. As a rule of thumb, if it goes down very slowly, I'll give it two, three seconds. Make sure it's staying under and give it two, three seconds before a strike. If it absolutely rockets under, then we're gonna be setting the hook pretty quick. You want a reasonably loose drag for these fish. They, they're capable of doing big runs, but generally it's gonna be a head shaky kind of fight. And they do have soft mouths, so you want to let them run if they can. If they looks like they're heading under a bommie or a rock ledge, just use your other hand to break the reel a little bit. Make sure they don't brick you. And I feel the fish are going to be in against that wash there and running underneath this, this rock ledge in front of me. So I'm not going to let it get too much further than that out the back. If I'm getting no action, I'll bring it in. And again, change the depth if I'm getting no action at all. There we go, we've got him. Turned away for a sec and we got Took. Oh, and he feels like not a bad one here. So here's where he's trying to put me under a ledge, so I'm just gonna use my, my reeling hand to put a bit of hurt on him. Oh, geez, they go hard. And he is a very nice fish. Again, I've just got a bit of a loose drag. Let him run if he wants to. They'll generally just shake their heads around. Just take your time. He's a very nice fish. So we're just gonna have to tire him out and then wait for a bit of swell to wash him up onto the ledge here with us. So there he is, yeah, he's a cracker. 
This is where the long rod comes in handy. Keep them away from under your feet so they don't bury you. Just come drag off the back, drag, dra drop off the drag a little bit. Just don't want to pull these hooks. Just going to bring him over to this corner over here. He's a very thick fish. That's it, go that way. Bring him over this corner and when we get a chance, we're gonna bring him up with the next big swell. So yeah, this is that long soft rock rod in action, soaking up those head shakes, keeping away from the rocks. It's gonna take our time, wait for a bit of swell. He's a very nice fish. That one wasn't quite going to do it. You don't want to lift them. Just wait for a bit of swell. So here we go. Got to make sure he's in the right spot. And we're just going to surf him up. And just like that, we've got him. Oh. And he is an absolutely cracking fish. He's a bit deformed. He looks like he's got that saddleback syndrome pretty bad. But he's a very healthy fish besides that, very heavy. As you can just see that hook poking out of his mouth a tiny bit. Lovely, there's number one on the, on the uh, new gear. Let's get him back and get another one. Oop, there's a down. And we've got him. Feels like another not bad one. Gonna keep him out from under this ledge. Oh no, it's a boot. It's the old Kelpie dog. These are not what you want, but you will pick them up occasionally. They look a bit dangerous to handle, but they're fine. A little bit spiky like any other fish, but not too bad. But no good eating. They, fo they fight a little bit, but generally, you don't want to see them. Yeah, so there he is. That's a good old Kelpie. No more of you, please. So there's a nice down. Oh, it's come back up, but it looks like he's still got it and got him beautiful another not bad fish and there's that really head shaky kind of fight that's why you want one of these spongy rods he's a bit littler this one but the little ones tend to go even more hectically I don't want to come in. So I'm just going to come over this way with this one. Just a nice little spot to wash him up over here. Oh, they're a very cool looking fish in the water. There he is doing his roll. All right, let's bring him up. There he is. Beautiful. Just keep an eye on the waves. So there we go. He's still a legal fish, but a bit smaller. He'd be that 30 centimetres or so. But that's going to be the last one on the new school gear. We're going to bust out the centre pin now and see if we can get a few on in. All right, guys, we're ditching the egg beater. And we're going over to the center pin. So this is an Albi 475B, which is the Luderick Special. They don't make this specific model anymore, but they've released the 47G, which is the exact same one, just has a bit of a facelift. And with center pins, the, why they're so good is because there's no drag. You can let the float go just like that, bring in line very easily. And it just means also that you're using the palm of your hand 
for drag to fight the fish and it just gives much more control over your fight and the, and the uh, drift of your float. I've also got this spooled with 12 pound Dengo float line, which is specifically made for this kind of stuff. So it's a monofilament that floats on the surface. So it just makes it easier to set the hooks. You're not dragging line through the water. I've also gone with a bit of a fancier float. So there's a guy down in Sydney that runs a ludric.com.au website that specializes in ludric gear. And he has a range of floats that have corresponding weighted swivels. So it just takes the guesswork out of, out of how much weight you need to get your float, float sitting well. So they'll just be, that'll be just under the amount to take it, take the float under. So you just add one bit of split shot or two bits of split shot and you're ready to go. He's got a whole range of them. You can buy these fancy little tubes. And there's the different swivels right there. Below that, I've actually gone away with the swivel. And what I'm using instead is a weighted weed fly. So these are from BWC flies. I believe they're down in Sydney as well. That's in the cabbage pattern, but they make um, a couple different weed varieties as well. So that instead of a split shot, and then we're just running down to a size eight Daichi hook, and that's from ludric.com.au again. And these are a fantastic hook. I actually like them in the size six, but I'm just running out. I've got them on order. So let's see how the center pin goes. All right, we've just baited up some more cabbage, just using that same technique before. Now casting a center pin reel is a little different. These Alvi ones you can click to the side and cast like a typical side cast, but you do that all day, you're gonna end up with a fair bit of line twist. So what I highly recommend is learning how to do the Wallace cast. And I won't demonstrate it too much here, but in essence, what you're doing is just a regular cast, but you're gonna start spinning the reel as you flick your line. And it's just gonna allow the line to come off very smoothly. It's great cast, it's really accurate but I'll link a uh, video on how to do it properly below. But here's where the center pins really come into their own. It's just allowing any surges, you can just give a little flick like that and line's gonna come off the reel, making your bait look really natural. Just spin it in if a wave comes in for the surge. And it's great for line management. That's out a bit far for where I want it. We're getting most of our fish here just at our feet. So just gonna drop him in right there. Because there is no drag, you just gotta place your hand on the bottom of the reel if they wanna take a run. It is really quite enjoyable fishing actually. Just a great connection with the fish. You can put the herd on them if you really want to or let them go as free as they want. He's another not bad one. Gonna walk him over this other side of the ledge where there's a bit of wash to bring him up. There he is, just there. Oh, get him out of the rocks. All right, just need the right wave to bring him up. This one looks like it could do it. Beautiful. And we actually got him on the weed fly. There you go. So there he is. Beautiful Ludric. That weed fly in the corner of the mouth. You beauty. Uh, there's a big school of mullet coming through. a nice down but it's coming back up no is he still got it gonna have to wait for him to come back 
That was a very nice down, but you just didn't have it down long enough for what I'm liking today. Any other day I probably would have struck that, but they're, they're seeming to uh, want to take it down for quite a while before they swallow it. Oh, there we go. And we've got him. Nice. Another quality little fish. Oh, there he goes, trying to get under the ledge. Just got to keep an eye on the waves here, make sure we don't get cleaned up by a rogue. Such a rough and tumble fight, lots of head shakes. Slowly edge him over to this little bit over here where the waves are coming up. If you're up on a higher ledge, it would be worth bringing a um, long handled net. If you've got no chance of washing them up and here comes a big wave. So we'll probably get him up with this. Oh, but he's, oh no. Tried bullying him a bit hard there in the end. I wanted to get him up to the surface and I just pulled the hook. Nice long down and got him. Beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. This could be a good fish, this one. Although the little ones can run just like the big ones. They've got so much power in that tail. I oh, know, he just looks like a bit of a medium sized one. There he is, twisted on the surface. I just have to wait for a bit of a set. I'll try and lift him up on this rock. They just don't give up. They just go and go and go. Oh, oh, oh. oh where's the set? Here we go, this one might do it. I won't bully him like the last one if I'm not going to get the opportunity. I'll just have to wait, yeah. Are we going to get him up? Yes, lovely. Oh. There we go. He's a little one. High 20s, but they just go hard. Perfect eating size. And they are great eating these things. You just have to look after them, like I said a bit earlier. There's a little down. All right, he's at it for quite a while. And into him. Nice. Be a big one, I dare you. Oh, he's got a bit of weight there. Yeah, he could be a bit better. He's right down deep. I can't give him too much more line, otherwise he might bury him in a hole. Oh, yeah, this feels like quite a nice one, actually. I'll just walk him over this side. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, keep him away from under the ledge there. Oh, he wants to go under. Go on. I don't think he's a very long fish, but he's certainly chunky. And it's just the patience game. Like we pull hooks on one of them. If you go too hard, then you're just gonna pull those tiny hooks out of their mouth. Very soft mouths on them. All right, come on, bud. Now we just got to wait for the wave. Yeah, he's a nice fish. This one might do it. 
Oh, just not. Not enough. All right, this one could be the ticket. Come on, wave, do your thing. We're getting close. Yes. Beautiful. Another mid 30s, but just a chunky fish. Had a bit of heart. You beauty. Well, all right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this one. It's been a pretty fun session. Got about six or seven, which ain't bad at all. I hope I've passed on the info so you can chase them off the rocks as well. If you're not that keen on the rocks, good news is, is that blackfish are also pretty thick through the harbors and estuaries lakes, um, especially coming into winter when they school up at river mouths to, to spawn. So I'll be showing that off in the near future. Until then, I'll catch you next time.